guests have been asked to speak here in regards to mining reform and exploration specifically. Now, um, we need to know what is at risk here in the Stress Leckies, and with the Stress Leckies, I talk about this whole region of Gippsland. This is a very relevant comment when we talk about us being farmers and owners of, the, of our land, that we do not actually own our land. We only have the enjoyment of our land, and it's for this reason that the government can transfer a licence to another entity to come onto our land to run their business as they see fit. So, that's it. We have no legal rights. <coughs> So for what? This is a. Oh, I'm gonna, hang on. So what happens here is when you have a exploration license, and currently this one stands for five um, years, it can progress to a well, it's a, a exploration license, and it can extend to a retention license, which can go for ten years, with the option of another two ten-year periods. So potentially you've got thirty years of this area under a license. Now, with this hydro scheme, we do actually have this, you know, talking about mantle mining, mining coal for 20 to 30 years before they get to that hydro scheme. That's what they have to do. So, within this, you have lost control of your land, how you sell it, what you do with it, any loans, any future, um, you know, improvements that you do to your land. For what? This is a very speculative industry. What we do know is the government has this exploration industry as a standalone industry, and that we are the ones who suffer. And it's, it's, we're just sold off as this other commodity. And the government condone it. We have no understanding why the government currently have given out these licenses. Now, so what do we expect? If in the next 20 years, before we get to that hydro scheme, coal fires, and we all know what coal fires have happened here, the Stress Lecky Rangers in 2012 just recently had one of the mother of all in you know, the Caligny re um, region. And then Mansfield want to open more mining of coal, so that you are actually, you're not actually staying in the Trove Valley, you are actually extending out, aren't you? Is that the reason? I just told you what the reason was. Did you not listen to it? Yeah. <laughs> and I just need to clarify that, that you are going into black coal, but you are, you're not entirely going under the Latrobe Valley. I, I told you that we have no interest in mining any of these areas. The only area we would like to mine is under the under. Latrobe Valley Okay, alright, that's fine. Okay, so for a period that you would get there, it's like you're talking about a 20 year period that we would get to there. In the press release, we put out the two years and have information on. Okay. Five years by five years by five years by five years. Each of the five years are as we can be doing. Okay. The hydro pump system within the first five years we can find the right spot. Okay, so you heard that five years by five years. Excuse me, Tracy, can yep. I just draw this uh, process forward? Yep. Aim questions of respect for both questioners, and if you could just continue your presentation, okay. then we can get together over a QA afterwards. Currently, over the Trove Valley, we have issues with subsidence. This is from years of dewatering. So, areas near the Hazelwood Mine, we have 2.4 metre incremental subsidence drop that's been going on for 40 years. It's happening at 30 millimetres a year on. So, we're currently sitting at some areas of 2.8. Within that, it impacts our groundwater scenario. Access to. So, rainfall from the stress lakes is really important. And it, it, it actually is the discharges that go into our full river streams for the five rivers. It feeds into our groundwater system. So any impact and damage to that is an actual water trigger federal issue. And with this one, it comes down to the seismic impacts that happen from that. And because of the water mainly going through the fractures of the volcanics up in this area, this is a significant problem with future seismic activity here. 
This is basically what we have when we have the north to the south. That is the compressions that we have. That's where the darker areas are cold measures, the wider areas are the aquifers. So on the south side is up into the, the stress ledges area. <coughs> Again, the next area, this is from an east-west. We have a compression, which is the, 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 the stress compression that we have, and then we have an intra-plate um, push-up to the north. So that's where you've got your aquifer problems. So what's in the next significant effect in the stress lake is, is your earthquake zones. Unfortunately, stress lake sits in the one big hot spot in Victoria. Before 2009, 50 earthquakes. Um, since then, we've recorded 700 and it's increasing. The earthquake threat in Gippsland is over the next decade, they're to be on the Morwell fault line, which is the major one. There are a lot of more significant ones, but the, the main one over the next decade that they reckon there will be a significant one. We had the more um, the Moe one being 5.4. You see where the Morwell fault line is? And the Rosedale and the Yarra. They're a major fault line that goes through the Latrobe Valley. And these are all your little ones that go off and they're all the significant areas. This is the Trove Valley earthquake scenario. Exactly where my mantle mining want to go is where the Morwell fault line sits, smack in the middle of the Hazelwood mine. <laughs> So out of that, when this is a predicted scenario because we are sitting on an active fault line, they want to put a hydro dam on an unstable fault line. So what they've done here with this scenario, they're talking about all the problems that would impact. 5.5 being your basic damage, and then you go upwards, and we're talking about significant damage to power infrastructure. Okay, so this is your scenario as we talk about. This is your 5.5 and then we go up to 6. That is what they are talking about being an impact in the Latrobe Valley on the Morwell fault line in the next couple of decades. Right where Mantle Mine will put their solar line. So they exist because it's real. Morwell River collapsed 2012. That was um, June 6th. On June the 19th, you had the um, um, Bowie earthquake. Because a huge amount of weight of water went into an unstable area. Exactly the same thing could happen with a hydro dam. It is totally not suitable. Now, the problem here is because talking about years of and where is this going to go, we don't know if this is going to facilitate some investment or this is real. Now if it is real, do we really think that our government is going to put all this at risk? Earthquakes, impacts on our groundwater, fires? That's the issue at hand here. So you've got two things. It's either to facilitate an investment deal for capital raising for mantle mining or it's to progress on to where the government are happy to say yes we're going to put this on the water risk. Tracy, do you want to the last slide? <laughs> this is the exploration licence. This is the whole thing that the licensee has to be have the appropriate current public liability and all that. This will progress the same to when they go to a mining licence. They ever have enough liability insurance cover for all the damage that could be caused. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you again, Tracy. Uh, a lively and informative presentation.